Welcome to Valuable Coaching, hosted by Kevin Pratt and Miles Holland, with today's guest coach, Rob Rios. All right, welcome to Valuable Coaching uh, with Miles Holland, my co-host Kevin Pratt. Uh, we're here today with uh, Rob Rios, and Kevin's going to go ahead and give us a little bit of an introduction. Yes, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce Coach Rob Rios. Uh, Coach was born in Indio and grew up in Indio, California, to Bob and Rosemary Rios. He has three wonderful kids, Cade, uh, Gage, uh, Kendall, and Morgan. He also is happily married to his husband, Josh, and they reside in Las Vegas. Uh, growing up, Coach Rios actually played water polo, played some club water polo in Indio. Then he went to St. Mary's uh, University got to actually play club volleyball there with the setter. After he graduated there, he was involved in college coaching at Cal as the men's uh, volleyball uh, club assistant coach. He was the Holy Names head coach at that college. And then recently he was on the Juniata staff as a volunteer assistant coach. And in 2007, he uh, started his club, Vegas United, where I believe he started the boys first. And then now they got the girls and I could tell you from my end coach, you're doing a great job running that club. And then finally, uh, he's also the high performance uh, director and uh, has won numerous medals at Vegas United and in that director role in Southern California. So coach, it's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for having me. Yeah. Um, well, one thing we really like to find out is, is kind of how you got your start in volleyball. A lot of us have different stories of where that came from. Usually we've all started off in, in other sports and, and then kind of somehow found our way there. So what's kind of your origin story with volleyball? It, it, it's, a, it's a really funny story. As, as an athlete, I was, uh, I was fortunate. I was a good student. So I went to a, a summer scholar program at UC Santa Barbara just before my senior year in, uh, in high school. Uh, I'm just old enough that uh, volleyball for boys really was – concentrated to the Orange County area. Growing up out in the Inland Empire, we didn't have access to that. It was a, it was a, pretty, it was a pretty okay water polo player. And uh, so I went to the summer program and was supposed to be taking these really rigorous classes. And that was a drag. Uh, so I signed up instead for this indoor volleyball class. And it was taught by the legendary Kenny Preston, who later in my life, I, I came to know. And he has twins. I have twins. So that was kind of fun. Uh, and then I signed up for a beach volleyball class with this, I don't know if you've ever heard of her, Kathy Gregory. So those are the people who taught me how to play volleyball. I'm sure I was awful. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure I was not uh, up to, to snuff. But, but that was actually my introduction. Those two extraordinary legends of our sport were the people who unwittingly taught me how to play volleyball. Yeah, it's great you mentioned those coaches because uh... – I can tell you, Kenny Preston, I know he's made a lot of impact in uh, men's volleyball players' careers. I, I went to his camp, actually, too, as a child. But a question I have for you, Coach, is when did you know you wanted to be a coach? You know, I was really lucky. When I was a, when I was a water polo player, I, I, I'm not an extraordinary athlete by any means. Uh, I, I'm somebody who is pretty clever. I'm somebody who works really hard. I'm somebody who's very motivated. So for me to succeed as an athlete in, in any sport, I, I simply had to understand it better uh, and figure out how to, uh, how to you know, use my meager skills to, to try and be successful. And so, so I was pretty fortunate that I had to understand sports probably better than I could play them. Um, in, our, in our program, we had a summer league. In our water polo program, we had a summer league. So I started to coach developmental water polo when I was in high school uh, and was, was pretty successful um, doing that, uh, at least uh, at that level. So, so that was probably my first introduction. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun explaining concepts and getting kids to, to have fun competing. And um, I didn't think it would ever become a career for sure. But uh, here I am 30 years later doing this uh, and, and loving it. So I'm pretty fortunate. Yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, I, we both teach uh, physical education and um, there are definitely certain kids that come, come into our classes. I've had this experience where they are really good athletes and um, I think some of them take for granted the fact that they are athletic and they don't really want to learn the ins and outs of the game. 
um, whatever the game might be in this case, volleyball. And um, I mean, that's great for kids to hear, I think. And, and um, having that ingenuity is, is uh, really important if you want to go to that next level. Um, is that something that you help instill in your players now? Um, Cause you're obviously getting some good athletes. You're obviously being able to send them on to college, but um, is that something you think is helping uh, separate those kids maybe from, from others that are out there being recruited? I think if there's anything, I've always wanted to work with children. I, I think that's a that's a, a gift I was born with, a skill I was born with, and uh, have certainly worked to cultivate that uh, through my education and then through my life's experience and work. But uh, I, I think some of the messages we, we tell kids is, is pretty simple, and, and it's maybe even a little cliche, but look, I mean... Uh, you can be talented and be outworked. You can uh, you can be talented and be out trained. And I think that there's a level at which uh, either kids are just more physically gifted than you are, and you have to find ways to continue to compete, or kids are more motivated to improve than than you are, and you have to find ways to compete. So I think it's it's a constant assessment of what are my gifts, and and how do I use them best. And how do I continue to enhance what my gifts are? Uh, and I think that's, that's really critical. Yeah, you, you know, talking also about coaching too, uh, what were some of the coaches, if you don't mind, that were influences on you that made you want to be a coach or some role models that you looked up to when you were becoming a coach? You know, it's funny, my, my career is so backwards and I was so gifted. I, I, you know, I went from learning how to play volleyball, learning, and again, I mean, as this really novice recreational class at, at, at a summer program, I learned at 17 and I was coaching as an assistant coach at UC Berkeley men's team, which was at that point a perennial powerhouse. And we believed it was supposed to be on the precipice of becoming division one uh, at 22. So in that really short time frame, I went from learning how to do this to actually being an assistant coach. Uh, I spent my summers with Don Shaw. Uh, you know, Don, Don was a taskmaster. He's obviously brilliant. Uh, he was tough, but we learned so much back in the day, you know, I, all the coaches, all the great coaches, coaches who I still am, am humbled by and honored to, to even know a uh, rich Polk, a uh, Travis Turner. We all spent our summers doing the same thing. Um, and so it was sort of this, you know, would become, with the exception of me, but uh, who's who? With it? And that's where we learned and spent our summers. So, you know, we'd be there for a few weeks at Stanford working with Don and his camps and, and learning how to teach and coach volleyball. And then probably the single greatest influence for me in terms of volleyball is Dave Nichols, and uh, his nickname is Cisco. But Dave played at UCLA. He, he was a brilliant, brilliant volleyball player from the 70s. He was the grad assistant to Karch Karai under Al Skates at UCLA. Uh, he's gone on to have this extraordinary career in women's volleyball, winning national championships at Barry and other places, and, and then was a head coach at Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, now he's a club coach and sort of on the, the precipice of retiring and helping out with a men's program in the Detroit area. But, but those were the people that I learned from. So I, I think I went from sort of just learning how to play to catapulting into these really extraordinary opportunities to learn around these wonderful brilliant coaches and so um, I certainly wasn't in their league I'm still not in their league but uh, I, I was surrounded by these great minds and able to to learn from them my entire career. Yeah for those younger viewers that just heard that I think it's so fascinating that you did a true grassroots effort how to become a coach and it's just fascinating because when I hear your story, I can totally relate. The first thing we were talking about, Joe, off the record earlier, just, you know, before we started, Joe Wartman, my coach, he let me, I said, hey, I need a summer gig. I got to make X amount of money. He's like, oh, you should work camps if you want to be a coach. And it's just exactly what you said. I work Stanford, Nebraska, USD. And for you young viewers out there to want to be a coach, I've never been turned down to work a camp, you know, when I was 18 right. to now. And like, just like coach uh, Rios just mentioned, like you can learn a lot. And these are the type of conversations you have at the dining hall when you're running the camp. So it's just so cool to hear coach. And it's, it's cool that you were gritty and you grinded it out and you did it the right way. It seems like. It's super fun. And, and I think I'm, I'm very, uh, I am very 
I'm very respectful. I'm very humbled and certainly privileged to have been able to spend that time. And I think what you said is true. It's, it's not even the time that we spent in the gym. It was uh, running to grab a lunch and asking questions and uh, listening and maybe even just listening to other coaches talk about their teams or what they were doing to train. And, uh, you know, when I spent my last summer, I think it was one of my last summers there, there was this young guy named Matt Furbringer who was a freshman and coming in before his freshman year. It was the summer before his freshman year at Stanford. And he was coming in to get some training. And I actually got to hit balls at him. And Matt doesn't even know that or remember that. And I get to coach against Matt all the time. And Matt and I work together. But, you know, it, it's sort of been extraordinary and, and surreal. The, the players that, who become extraordinary great coaches, Matt, obviously, an assistant coach in the Olympic Games. And we'll be going back again, I think, next summer. Um, uh, the connections are, are, are wild and, and extraordinary. Yeah. Camps, camps are definitely a great memory for me working those. Um, again, you get to start off with some, some pretty young kids that are, you know, sometimes maybe even brand new to the game or maybe just have a tiny little taste of it. So it's pretty fun. Um, is that something at your club that you try and do? How, how young are the kids that you're starting off and, and then what kind of, uh, what kind of things are you doing to help retain those kids and keep them in your club and keep them wanting to come back for more? Yeah, so, you know, in Las Vegas, one of the biggest challenges we face is, is just being in this sort of weird space. So we are members and we're part of the SCVA, but obviously we're three, four hours away. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, developmentally, it, it was a challenge when we first started. So a few things that we've done and, and evolved to, we have a fundamentals program that's a really geared at kids that are about third grade and up. And it's a, it's a fun environment. We have a, a varying net heights and ball sizes and weights to, so that kids are experiencing success uh, and that they're, they're not having to worry about using a conventional net height. We can, we can encourage those kids to be out on the floor and use as many contacts and exchanging over the net in a fun environment. Um, We've been really lucky. Our, our approach to camps for older kids in particular has been to use my relationships to bring in great college coaches. And uh, that has been a primary source for us in our community with older kids is bringing in college coaches from all over the country where we think uh, it can help us, one, with recruiting, two, with exposure, but three, great training. We've had uh, Alan Knipe in our gym several times. I mean, he's really, he, I don't even think he knows his his imprint is so strong in, in, in a lot of our training techniques. I think he's one of the best training coaches in our game, certainly extraordinary and uh, cutting edge. He's, he's constantly working to improve what he's teaching. And, and so uh, we're super fortunate that we have these great coaches and we've had coach Dunphy out. We have coach Hunt out. We've had coach Hawks out. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, we've had coach Birch out. So I, I just think, um, using and leveraging our relationship to have what I consider or who I consider the best coaches, Coach Shibuya, the best coaches in the country come and, and help our kids and our athletes and, and it's great exposure. And again, I get to have dinner with them and I get to ask questions and our staff gets to sit around and ask questions. And so I think there's a lot of learning that happens in those pretty fun settings, even, even in our clubs, even in our club environment. Yeah, Coach, you know, to piggyback on that, Due to social media, which is a really great tool, your club does a fantastic job just kind of putting on, you know, the, the billboard of what you're doing. I would say from in my experience being involved in club for the last, you know, 10 years is about as a coach. You kind of started the trend of having college coaches come into your gym and many have followed. I mean, I know over at Wave, we do that all the time. The coaches you just named, we have them there. I know Bay to Bay does it. Uh, Travis at Balboa has coaches there and it's it's really cool because uh, I agree with you 100% it just raises the standard of your club gets the kids fired up gets the coaches uh, more engaged and I think it's really cool you did that because you really raised the level of standard of club volleyball because once people saw oh man coach Rob's doing that over in Vegas we got to get those coaches too and I applaud you for that uh you know, and I know that you're obviously the director, the boss there. I've, <laughs> I've noticed that when I've coached against you, I've, I've looked over and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Coach is with the 15s right now. Oh, he's with the 14s. He's hanging out with the, the you know, the 17s. And I pulled you aside. You're like, yeah, I'm always keeping an eye on my coaches, trying to support them. 
and all that good stuff. But um, what what's the process of you hiring a coach? How are you mentoring these coaches? Because I know that's important to you. And how do you do that at Vegas United? Yeah, so so we're really fortunate. You know, last year, and I, 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 I just recently left, but I, I've for several years have sat on the AVCA diversity committee. And uh, so one of the things we're super intentional about is representation. We have we have a very diverse coaching staff. And, and, and in particular, last year, uh, last season, every head coach, uh, with the exception of one team on our girls' side of the program, was a woman. And, and I think that's super important. We had women of color, and, and I think that's really important. I think it's an important commitment, and there's, a, there's an intentionality required. You have to be purposeful. Um, and I think, but I think that enough, enough women play volleyball. Why, why aren't we seeing greater representation of women in the, in the coaching ranks, and particularly in the head coaching ranks? Uh, we have women who coach in our boys program, uh, two extraordinary, very successful women coach in our boys program. Uh, and, and again, we, virtually every team with the exception of two are on our girls side are helmed by women. And I think that's important. So what do we look for? We look for, obviously, uh, we look for great human beings. We look for people who uh, want to come into an environment where uh, they're committed to sort of a whole person and wanting to be competitive. I think that's important. I think when we look at the investment that families are making, our sport is certainly, uh, certainly expensive, right? And, and for, us, uh, for us in Las Vegas, uh, our, our events are out of state, every single one, with the exception of now the Red Rock. We're fortunate that that's in town. But prior to that, every event for us uh, has required travel. So um, you know, parents, families are making an enormous commitment, time and monetarily. And, and I think it's, it's, it's important to me that, that we're working hard for those families, that it's not just transactional, it's transformative. And, and I, I can tell you, you know, I was raised that if you're going to ask for a dollar, you better earn two. And, uh, and so that's what we ask of our coaching staff. We ask our coaching staff to work hard and we have Group, uh, we have group trainings last season every month. We had our coaches together. We worked on a manual together. It was collaborative. Uh, we ask our lead coaches to kind of give ideas, concepts. Uh, we've tried to put in some milestones based on age groups so that we're all coaching towards the same sort of milestones as our athletes progress. Uh, something that I, I've talked to Jed recently that I know Wave is starting to do is, you know, we've had milestone coaches for a long time. We try to keep our our head coaches in the same age group so that there's a progression of athletes and, and it's, a, it's a known progression. We know the arc of development that we're trying to achieve. So I think there's a multitude of things. Uh, we bring in coaches. We, we've in the past, we've invested money in bringing in coaches just to do coach education. Uh, we've had Lucas Slabe, who's with the women's national team in our gym, uh, just talking to coaches and expressly doing that. I think, moreover, uh, one of the new commitments and I think an area where we need to see continued growth is we bring uh, the wonderful Jen Fry in every year to do diversity training for our coaches. This is an area where we have to continue to improve as, as, our, as our sport becomes more diverse. Our coaches, um, our coaches have to do a better job of understanding the complexities that are included in, in the diverse rosters and, and make sure that we are embracing diversity and supporting it, encouraging it. And, uh, and I think that's been an important thing. It hasn't always been smooth, by the way. We, we've certainly had our fair share of issues and bumps. Uh, I think the thing that I'm proudest of, though, is that we don't turn and run from them. We don't hide from them. We, we, we find solutions and experts to help us through some tough moments and through some difficult conversations so that we're all improving and learning. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the, something you just said really stuck with me is uh, that you don't want to make it transactional. You want it to be transformative. I think, um, again, in different experiences with club, there have definitely been times where it feels like there are just uh, transactional moments. And um, I, I've seen coaches just kind of going through the motion with their teams, especially when it's a, a non-travel team. I've taken my my small teams that I've had recently, mostly to local tournaments. And um, some of those coaches that are coaching just a local team for extra, you know, kind of little 
bonus on the side. They're not really putting in much effort. And, um, you know, to me, it'd be sad to see those kids go. So, I mean, I think that's great that you're working so hard to try and find a way to, you know, lay out a system where these kids know that they're going to get something for that money that they're putting in because it definitely can be expensive. Um, and so, I mean, that's, that's just a, that's a great quote. Um, you know, you're talking about different diversity training and those things. When, when you have kids who have, you know, tough homework, uh, schoolwork that they have to do, how do you handle some of those situations, some of that anxiety and stress of, of wanting to perform at a high level playing volleyball, but they also know that they need to, to do s their schoolwork and, and really uh, um, take, you know, take pride in that work as well? Yeah, you know, we're, we're, again, I think, I think understanding the level. So you kind of reference maybe a local team or a developmental team. I think, you know, one of those things is, is having an honest conversation with our coaches and making sure that we have a standard set within our program for each of those levels. So developmental level, there's a reason, there's a multitude of reasons why kids might be at that level. It could be because of ability, but it also could be because they have a very robust, busy schedule. They might be in band. They might do another sport. They might be a super academic kid. So I think it's understanding, understanding the context or at least the lens for that athlete, that family, that team, and having an appropriate expectation. So if we're, if we're a developmental team or maybe even a twos or a threes team, there's probably going to be a lot more room uh, for discussion about competing, competing priorities. Uh, I think when a kid probably ascends to a top team, at least in our program, that conversation starts to morph into time management and how do we schedule our time and how do we manage our time and understanding having been a student, having been a, a, someone who was on the college staff, you know, there, look, there, there's an expectation of, of your time and, and, and learning earlier than later that how to manage that time, I think is important. Uh, we're, we, we, we do regular grade checks. This year, that's been weird. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is a really weird year for that. But prior to this year, it's pretty common. We do grade checks where kids come in and they, they show us their grades and we talk about their grades. Uh, we do ACT. We have a great partner who, do, who does ACT preparation. That may be a thing of the past now that the UC school system has sort of changed that. But um, you know, we're really committed to our academic success of our athletes. We've had lots of kids go on to extraordinary places. Harvard, um, two, two athletes at Harvard, so a couple of athletes in the Ivy League. Uh, certainly a lot of Division three schools are far more academically rigorous than people would ever understand. Um, so I think... Uh, I think that's something that we just have to have conversations about. We have to have an expectation of, of and, and discussions and try and give our kids tools, tools to manage that. Well, uh, coach, I mean, I, I really mean this. My hat's off to you because in my experience of being a college coach, college recruiting coordinator at the club, and it just seems to me the word I use a lot with you is pioneer. Like you, you talk to club coaches and they're starting now getting really into recruiting coordinating or they're doing this and that, no. but it seems like you've been doing that long ago, like five, six, seven years ago. And then now I truthfully have never heard a club director. And I really mean this. I've never heard them say, yeah, we do grade checks. And like, they may say it, but I don't know if they really do it or partner up with an ACT. And like, that is so huge because you're clearly teaching these kids life skills. You're clearly, you know, Volleyball is going to stop eventually. We don't have professional volleyball indoor. I mean, it's starting to happen a little bit, but it's not like the NBA or MLB. And right. I just, I really hope that people will watch this and listen, it, it can be done. You know, a, an influence that a director and a coach has, you can do a great check and you can have that time for five, 10 minutes before practice. And the kids will listen to that coach it can make a huge impact. And, you know, I know other clubs, I know like Wave is starting a life skills program that they're running, which is amazing. And I, I just think that I hope other clubs start following your lead. Um, so National Signing Day was recent and obviously on your uh, social media platform, as we all can see, a bunch of kids were signing through your club to yeah. programs. Obviously, it's huge that you have the college coaches visit. We see that. We, we see all the coaches you've had. But what is maybe something else you do to get 
get help those kids through their process because you got a bunch of kids, girls and boys moving on. What's the magic potion that you do? <laughs> so I don't know that there's any magic. I think it's a lot of work. And I think what we do is we have, uh, we have another person who is my counterpart and committed to, uh, to the recruiting process on the girls side of the program. I tend to do a majority of it on the boys side of the program. We have a, a, a third party platform that we subscribe to that our athletes get access to. Cause I think it's a, it's an important communication tool and it's a warehouse for video. Um, so those are, so those are a few of the things that we do. One of the things that we've done in response specifically to COVID and we're really proud of this is we actually invested and installed uh, cameras in our gym and are recording every practice. Uh, one of the concerns we had for this year was uh, competition. Would we be able to, you know, kids here to four kids had, they stopped competing in March, right? They, they, there was nothing going on. And so uh, our concern was you had these kids, especially the 2021, 2022 kids who just uh, sort of lost all opportunity to showcase growth and development, physical maturation, and, and so we made an investment in our gym so that we now have a recording. We have a camera on every court. We were able to collaborate with a few college programs, talk about uh, perspective and camera height and, and what was the best view for them to uh, see and evaluate. And uh, we just launched that this fall. So uh, now athletes can come in with a, with a thumb drive and they can download footage of their practice so they can upload that. They can they can coalesce that into some sort of highlight video, skills video, and they can continue to show, hey, I'm taller. Hey, I'm better. Look, I jump higher. My, my, I've progressed. Even if coaches, especially at the Division One level, right, we're still in a, in a, in a, a non-recruiting period for them. So it's harder for them to see, even if teams are finding avenues to compete, it's still hard for those coaches to see. So we, we sort of just made that investment as a program so that our kids would have that regular, uh, regular access to, to show and to showcase what they're doing. So I think, I think it's, again, it's, it's just being purposeful and intentional and wanting to put your athlete first. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Because one of the things that we've heard from some of the college coaches we've talked to is that, um, you know, they, they really, they don't want to just see a highlight video. They don't want to just see a warm up you know, it's easy to see kids do amazing things at, in those highlight videos or warmups, but they want to see how kids act and practice. Um, I definitely know I've, I've had athletes before that are, you know, they they don't hardly work in practice at all. And they just expect to go play because they're one of the better athletes. And, and um, you know, that's not really the kind of kid that you want on a college team because they're not going to progress enough to be able to play. So um, being able to have that is, is that really is very forward thinking, as Kevin said, um, and to, to go to the colleges too and ask, you know, what, what is the best way to, to have our kids seen? Because um, I know I've seen videos of, of, you know, matches where it's, it's hard to know what's going on or you got a parent filming and they just want to film their one kid and that's not really a right. best way to see what's going on. So. Um, yeah. So, so it was, it, you know, it was a little bit of work, but I, I again, I think, uh, and, and really as a, coach selfishly it's a wonderful tool because you know when when uh perhaps a segment of practice is is maybe not optimal you can pull kids aside and say so you know this is getting recorded right so you know if coach so-and-so asked to see practice today is this really what you want to represent is this the consistency of effort and uh, that we want to show and uh you know that has a pretty positive effect uh it's pretty immediate for the athlete. Yeah, that's, that's a great accountability tool. Um, and, you know, and you said too, it's a little bit extra work. That seems to be one of the themes is that you're putting in that little bit extra work. I think, I think that's got to have a trickle down effect then too, to your coaches and then obviously to the players. And so I just know um, as somebody who has two boys, I, I just love when uh, people are working hard to, to kind of create better young men. Um, and, and putting in that extra work. Um, so, I mean, hearing that, uh, hearing you say that so many different times throughout this, that, that, oh yeah, a little extra work, a little extra effort to do this um, for the players. Um, you know, that's just, I applaud you for that. That's, that's great. You yeah. know, and, and Kevin knows me. I, I, you know, we, we're really fortunate. We have guys who uh, have 
we have men and women who have played in final fours, NCAA Division One final fours. We have uh, male athletes who have participated on the senior national team. And that's, that's extraordinarily heady stuff. But, you know, we also have guys who uh, worked their tail off and were really meager students and went on to play Division Three volleyball and uh, were All-Americans and own NC2A records and are now trying to become firemen or have become doctors or dentists or, uh, you know, CPAs. And I'm, I'm every bit as proud of those athletes and the human beings they've become as I am of the guys who are playing professionally overseas or, or uh, you know, the, or the athletes who got to play in a, a Division I Final Four National Championship. Um, you know, I, I think the objective here is for us to help athletes advance their lives. Our, our, mission, our mission is creating life-altering possibilities via volleyball. That's our mission statement. And, and so for me, it's, it's how do we maximize the opportunities for people's lives through the time that we have together. And for some of them, it's volleyball. And for others, it's, it's not, and that's okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's great because I, I actually, I just found out a student that I had um, who I kind of introduced to volleyball and he played really well in high school. Um, he was a great athlete, probably could have gone on and done other athletics. Uh, he decided to join the army right out of high school. Um, and uh, when I was able to communicate with him a little bit about why he did that, um, you know, it, it just was, it was great to see somebody making, making that kind of choice and, and knowing that he had a little bit of an impact in it. And those almost seem more rewarding than if you're just sending somebody on playing a sport, because you know, they're going to be set up for, you know, a long period of time um, in their future rather than, you know, maybe you're just playing volleyball in college and then not really having a, a clear path of what they want to do. So um, that's, that's great. Yeah. You know, um, so for a while now you've been the SCVA um, high performance director, which has been awesome. Yeah. I was lucky enough to be on board for a year with that. That was great. But every year you guys seem to be getting better and better and winning more medals on the boys and girls side clearly hired amazing coaches from the Pac-12, Big West, on the men's side, you know, NPSF coaches. Um, you know, I think Ohio State was on your staff one year. How yeah. has that helped you at Vegas United, all that, what you've uh, taken from that? Can you go and elaborate on that? Yeah, I, I, I think in a, in, in a variety of ways, right? Again, personally, I'm around who I consider to be the best coaches in the country, uh, whether that's David Hunt, Josh Walker, Nikki Sandlin, Kevin Birch, John Hawks, uh, Matt Worley. I mean, so I, I, Matt Furbringer, Alex Dunphy, um, Brad Keller. I, I think it, you know, really, truly, it's, it's sometimes I laugh and I tell people it's an embarrassment of riches. My job is the easiest job in the world because uh, one, you know, yeah, our program's been uber successful you know and i think i think we have a lot of clarity about what our program is about uh beyond that we have these extraordinary coaches extraordinary coaches and 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 look it's easy it's easy to have um high level athletes because they attract each other right so these extraordinary athletes attract these extraordinary coaches and vice versa extraordinary coaches attract extraordinary athletes. And um, I, I just think we've been, we have an embarrassment of riches in Southern California when it, when it comes to the talent on the bench from the coaching perspective and on the floor from the athlete perspective. And I think what we've done is we, we set about again uh, to make a very athlete centered, athlete centric experience. Uh, that's really our focus is how do we make this the best experience for the athletes? And, and I think for me, it was really clear. Part of that is let's put them with really high level coaches who uh, give them an opportunity to be trained exceptionally well, who give them an opportunity to maybe create really superlative relationships that help them in the recruiting process. And we've tried to expose them to really high level volleyball. And so uh, um, we're so fortunate and Davenport, Shannon Davenport, the SCVA give us extraordinary resources. Uh, we're able to run the program in a, in a truly world-class way. And, uh, and I think 
uh, I think uh, we've been really successful because of that. That's great. Um, you know, you're, you're going through and you're doing all these amazing things for volleyball and, and for you know, other kids, but we know that you're a father and one thing we've been trying to figure out from all, all the coaches we talk to is how do you balance all that time um, coaching, running all these really high level uh, volleyball programs and then find time to, to make sure that there's a life balance there with, with family and um, so you don't get you know, too overwhelmed with just, just volleyball. Yeah, so, so I'm really guilty of not having balance. I don't, know that I, have a, I don't know that I have a popular or favorable answer to that. I think, um, I think you're really good at one thing. I think you're really good at where you put your energy. And so I guess what I've learned as I've grown older uh, is uh, I'm trying to make more time for the things that I want to be better at. And so whether that's relationship with my kids, whether that's uh, getting to watch them play sports, that's great. I I've missed a lot. That's the simple truth. I've missed a lot of things. I, I, you know, until COVID, I hadn't spent a 4th of July with my kids or at home. because That's junior nationals. Uh, and <laughs> so that's, you know, that's just the truth. The last year, our, our daughters were seniors in high school and I, I intentionally took some time off and had less on my plate. I chose that uh, so that I could spend a little more time uh, celebrating their senior year as athletes. And, uh, and then we had this crazy COVID year. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I would say that I, I think for me, for me, balance is a little bit of a myth. Uh, I think it's just, it's choosing when, uh, when and how you prioritize. Uh, I think if you're gonna be extraordinary at something or if you want to be super successful at something, that has to be your focus. And, and so how do, you, how do you carve out and how do you create a family? I'm fortunate my whole family uh, is in sports. Our, our son, who's an extraordinary student, is not in sports, so he probably dislikes it the most. But everybody else is an athlete and sort of gets it, right? Our daughters were fortunate. They're athletes and, they, and uh, they're starting to learn that, you know, as we sort of navigate and negotiate holiday recess and how you do that when you're, when you're an athlete and trying to play or prepare for a season. Um, I, I don't have a good answer for that, except for I think uh, you just you, you have to choose what you want to be good at and where you're going to put your energy. Well, Coach, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because I have the luxury of, as you know, we're buddies on social media. So it is, it's cool. I get a front seat to your life. And yeah. I will say this, like when we ask that coach or ask questions to those coaches, what's unique about you? And I don't know if you know this and he's too humble to talk about it, but club directing in Vegas, high performance in Southern California in Anaheim volunteer assistant in Juniata in Pennsylvania, all in the same season, just constantly on red eyes. Then I see him at tournaments and I turn around, I'm like, oh, there's Coach Rios with his two twin daughters walking around the convention, checking in. So like, I think you said it right, like the myth thing, I get that, but I do think you've got a nice little squad that they get it like, okay, we can spend time with dad here. We can kind of double dip. And, uh, and I also, I always see you posting about your family. You're very proud of them. So I, I'd like to think you have a good balance, but I think, you know, you use the word, you know, um, you know, what you're focused on at the time, but you seem to be really good at juggling a lot of things at the same time. So. Well, thanks. I, I think, look, I think, I think part of it is when you, you want to be successful, it's, it's, it's how many balls can you keep in the air? Right. And I, and I think, uh, I don't know. I think probably any parent of young kids feels the same way. I mean, you're trying to have a career. You're trying to have a relationship with your spouse. You're trying to be a parent. You're, you know, I, I think, I just think that's part of the game. And, and, uh, and I think I've been fortunate. Uh, I was raised with uh, a very real work ethic and, and an appreciation of that. And I have very loving and supportive parents. I have a really loving and supportive spouse. Our kids are pretty extraordinary. Um, but I've also learned, I've learned to say, I'm sorry. And, and I, by the way, I say this to our kids too. When I get things wrong, I tell our kids, Hey, I got that wrong. And I'm really sorry. Um, or we'll talk about how we can achieve things, but 
but yeah, Kevin, you're right. I mean, I've gotten on planes at, on a red eye to be somewhere because I was committed to that. And then not even 48 hours later on a red eye back to somewhere else. Um, I just think, again, if, if I'm committed to those things, I'm going to do what I have to do. Yeah, well, I, I would just say, too, kind of being in in that situation with kids right now is that, um, you know, I appreciate that that honesty because I think anybody who says, oh, yeah, it's really easy to, to go ahead and coach and come back home and, and be a great dad or a great mom, uh, whatever the case is, that's just not realistic. It, it's it's hard. I mean, I'm, I'm coaching at a pretty low – uh, you know, lower level uh, high school volleyball. And, um, you know, if it's a good win, I I'm coming, coming home on a high and I don't really know necessarily how my rest of my family's feeling. And they may not be in that same state. Same thing too. If it's a tough loss, come home and they might be looking for somebody to come cheer them up. And um, it, it's almost impossible, like you said, to, to balance those emotions uh, that you get from coaching sports and coming home and then trying to, to balance it. So I think that's a, I know that's a, that's a really honest, uh, valuable answer. I think for people to just understand that, um, you know, it's going to be hard to balance those things. You have to really work at it. So again, another work ethic kind of thing. So. Yeah. yeah and, 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 and look, and, and I will tell you, I've, I've, I've had the privilege of being friends with a lot of extraordinary coaches at the collegiate level. And we have these conversations. I've had a, a lot of really candid private conversations with people, young coaches who were on the precipice of, of, earning a head coaching job, uh, what we would probably all consider a significant or important head coaching jobs. And, and I feel honored that they've reached out and we've had some of these talks uh, about what I think about how to be a spouse and a parent and a coach and can you be good at all of them? And I don't know that I know the answer, but I'm certainly, I'm certainly willing to share in a very unvarnished way my perspective and my experiences and some of my failures too. Yeah, so for my end, Miles might have more, but uh, that's all I got for you. But I will tell you this, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I am convinced if I had a child, a niece, a nephew in the Vegas area, no doubt about it, they'd be going to Coach Rios. And the thing that I actually admire the most about you, like, I get it. You guys are good. You're starting to win medals on the boys' side. I get to kind of watch that a little bit more. But I see what you're doing on the social media on the girls' but you're clearly also a life skills program and you, you carved it out for us tonight. So uh, I just appreciate that on, on another note. I don't know. I probably met you seven years ago or something, but I just really appreciate it. And you talked about high performance earlier and I'm, you know, I'm good friend to Todd Hollenbeck who used to be at SC. He's now at Menlo. And Todd called me and said, hey, I, I think we have a vacant spot last second. And I'm looking around the room, just like you said. I'm like, oh, there's Coach Hawks. You know, and I knew all these people. I'm like, there's Coach Hawks. There's Coach Keller. There's, And you were, you put me on the staff. And that helped my career so much. I appreciate that. I owe you one forever. And uh, you're always growing the game in the right way. And you've made a huge impact on my life. So I really appreciate you, Coach. Well, thank you. And we had a great rousing rendition of Sweet Caroline on that bench, didn't we, that, that, uh, <laughs> yes, that we summer. Did. So, so that was super fun. And, and uh, you were extraordinary and generous and kind and hardworking. So I appreciate you too, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, I just have to say it's great to meet you tonight. Um, hopefully I um, can meet you in person. Hopefully once uh, some tournaments and stuff get going, Kevin and I are hoping to maybe bring this to, to one of those and, and sit down with some more coaches in person. Um, but yeah, I, I just have to say thank you again uh, from the perspective of a, a dad with boys, um, you know, having those life skills, having somebody who cares about um, how those boys are doing in school, um, and then also giving them the great tools to be become great athletes and, and better volleyball players and grow the sport. Um, it's just, it's great to see. So, um, you know, thank you so much for being on tonight. Well, thank you both for the invitation. It was very kind of you and I appreciate your time. And viewers, Follow this program, uh, Vegas United, on Instagram. Coach Rios, is, we just crap, uh, scratched the surface tonight. They're doing great things, and you show it on your Instagram all the time. So please follow him on Vegas United, and it's a great program to follow. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Have a great night. Thank you.